say that you have a grid on the page and um, you go to edit one of the items. So you double click the, the row selection here and the row edit template will bring up an area on the screen where you have explicit access to each one of the items in the row. Instead of being forced of going from field to field, the row edit template will expose each, each of the items so you can go in and say, well, I just want to change the title and let's say I want to change um, you know, the URL. You can update each one of those items. You can see that they're updated in the grid. And then when you post back to the page, it'll recognize that the updates need to be persisted back to your, your, your persistence layer. All right, well, let me show you how it's done. So here we are in Visual Studio 2008, and we're going against the 2009 Volume 1 release of the web client controls. And here I just have a script manager on the page and a web data grid. I haven't done anything else to it. So let's come over to the properties, and let's start off by, well, let's change the ID to WDG for web data grid. The width will make 100%. Uh, the height, I don't really want to restrict the height at this point, so we'll just delete that. Now what we can do is go ahead and bind it up to some data. So let's come out here and add a data source. So we'll go new data source and say object data source. I'm just going to name this ODS and we'll bind it to the book repository. So for the select, we'll do the get books method, update, calls update, insert, delete, all matches up nicely there. So we'll let this go ahead and generate all of our columns for us. And then to keep things simple, what I want to do is come through and remove some of these columns. So we're just going to take it down to the URL. So now we've got the, the ID, the title, the author, and the URL. So from here, what we can do is go and open up the behaviors editor. And we'd like to use the editing core the row edit template and this dialog just says that it wants to turn on the row selectors for us which is fine and then selection the only change we need to make here is that when you click on the grid instead of selecting a cell I want it to select an entire row and for the row select type we just want it to be single now if we hit apply and OK we've got those behaviors associated to the grid now there's one last thing that we need to do if we come through and edit the templates it will recognize that the row edit template is empty. We, we've told the, the behaviors that we want the row edit template, and so it's picking that up and saying that it'll generate it for us. So if we say OK, now we have an ID, the title, and the author. Now from here, if we just run this, I haven't written any code at this point, so I've deleted a few things, but if I just go ahead and run this, I can come in, you can see I have a nice row edit template already set up. I want to customize it a little bit more. Number one, I, I don't want people to be able to update the primary key, so we're going to remove that, and then we'll give it a little bit of style. So we'll come back here into the source, and if you come down to the template section, you can see this is where the row edit template is. So I'm going to move these styles up into a style sheet and change the markup a, a little bit. So to link it up to the style sheet, what I'll do is give this an ID of RET for row edit template, and then the markup here I'm going to replace with something that's a, a little bit cleaner. So we're just wrapping them in divs and then each one of the titles it will map to a CSS class called label. And so everything else is, is basically the same. It just it cleans up the markup a little bit. So we've got that. And you'll notice the ID is removed. Th this is bindings that happen on the client. So I, I don't want anybody to be able to make any changes to the ID. So I've removed that out of the row edit template. So the last thing that we need to do is bring in the styles needed to uh, style the, the template. And here it is. I just pasted it in from a place I have it set off. For the label, we'll just make it a font of bold. And since it's a div, it wants to take up its own space. So we're going to float it to the left and give it a width and just basically set it right next to the text box. And then the, the container, the row edit template itself, the, the thing that's maybe kind of interesting here is that all I'm doing is putting a, a, a transparent ping as a background so that it gives it that kind of sort of splattered type of look to it. So now when we go and run it, we should have something that looks a little bit more like our demo. So if I open this up, we'll get a nice <laughs> error. Okay, so there's one thing that left that I have to do. Since I took out the ID from our template, the client binding is trying to bring the ID into the template. So we need to remove this as well. Now, when we run it, it'll only try to bind up the data that we've got in the template. So we can open this item, and then we can switch this to say, you know, book 10. 
and me and now we should have exactly what we need. So setting up a row edit template is very easy. You have full control over the markup and there's a lot of flexibility that you, you, you have with it. And remember, what it allows you to do is go through the grid and make a number of changes at once. So I can come in and do this. And then when you post back to the page, it'll pick up that it needs to talk to your persistence layer and then it will do the persistence at that time. So I hope you found this helpful in making a custom row edit template. Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.